and I, we met uh, on the OM ships in 2000. We were cabin mates, and during that year that I was there, she shared her testimony, how she became a Christian in a very young church, and the situation of her church, which was really an inspiration for me and touching. And in 2005, I had the chance to visit her and also uh, participate a little bit in uh, the church camp and meet her fellow Christians. And it was so uh, well, a very special experience, very overwhelming to see how those young Christians with very little were so enthusiastic and very involved in church planting and discipling. For me, it was almost as if I stepped into the first church from Acts. It was very special. Pray and prepare, and we realize two things. First, we need to involve more people because just the two of us taking care of this family, it's too vulnerable, too risky. We need to have a larger group of people. Um, and we, secondly, we want to involve our church, not only to raise the financial means, but also because we think it is such a great opportunity for our church uh, to participate in this and that it can be a great blessing in return. So that was the two things we, we had in mind. And our church is one of the largest. It's called PKN, so Protestant Church of the, the Netherlands. It's more quite mainstream Protestant church. Um, and there are uh, currently two other missionary families being sent out. So there is some missions awareness in the church, but um, well, it's not that uh, Many of the church members have a personal experience with missions or on the mission field, and some people might not even have traveled abroad. Um, so although my husband and I were quite certain that bringing Byrma and family uh, to study at Tyndale was a fantastic idea, we were not sure if our church council might uh, see that the same way. Uh, and they might think it was yeah, too, too difficult or too risky to, to to undertake this. So we formed a small group, group of three more church members um, that have like key positions in the, in the congregation and that were uh, also enthusiastic about uh, this, this idea, this, this project. And uh, well, all of us started to, to share more with, uh, with other church members and we invited people to pray. And we made a well-documented and detailed plan uh, and submitted this to the church council, also involving beforehand uh, like the, the evangelistic and missionary elders. And, and great, yeah, we were very grateful that our church council decided to, okay, we will officially invite this Mongolian family to be one of the, the missionary. Um, and we can really see that Barma and Zorigon family are an inspiration for our church. Um, because hearing your testimony about being a first generation Christian going to a young church lacking in many ways really sometimes leaves people speechless because we realize that we take so many things for granted. And some some of the people attending the church in Bodegrave, they're one of many generations that have gone to the same church before, and they have uh, been growing up in a Christian environment. So it's good to realize what it means if that's not the case, and to, uh, to feel more connected to the church worldwide in this way, and, and with your family in particular. Um, so in summary, we are grateful that with Parma's uh, study at Tyndale, um, that God's kingdom in Mongolia is being built in a very sustained, sustainable way because you will be going back and staying there for a very uh, long time uh, serving your church. So you benefit from the education, but also the, the, the entire church in Mongolia will, will, will benefit through you. Um, and this is a great investment. Uh, and it all fits very well with the missions from Tyndale. Yeah. So we really hope that more churches will be inspired to do a similar thing. Yeah, maybe call it the uh, Bodegrave approach. Yeah. <laughs>